<laughs> Don't do this countdown. I'm not doing the countdown. Are we live yet? Oh yeah, we're live. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just tell you, it's like Wayne's World. Remember, he's like five, four. Three, two, I told you, don't say the two. You don't say two and one. Go. <laughs> hey guys, welcome uh, to episode 79 of What Are You Drinking Now here at the office. Um, Happy Monday. Everybody. I'm going to do Happy a little Monday, quick everybody. check just to make sure we... Oh, we got audio this week. Don't you uh, uh, This is yeah. why I want headphones on. He's real sensitive. <laughs> So yeah, uh, last week we had a really excellent episode. You guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching it because you sure as heck couldn't hear it. Um, and by the way, hey, Facebook watchers, will you tell us next time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you're our first line of defense. If, if, if there's no audio, just type in, can't hear you. Unless and, we just figured out that everybody just watches the show on mute because they feel bad for us. Just like, yeah, I'll give Rob some company yeah but so, i don't want to hear anything they say no. so um in case you can't tell by the uh background um uh behind nick there somebody's birthday uh nick is the birthday girl today mm. <laughs> um it, oh, it's crossed out it says boy yeah 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 we, I, want, I still wasn't sure it was for me but then i seen <clears throat> the purple unicorn <laughs> with the purple unicorn pinata just just beefing some rainbows and I, I knew deep down that my crew was looking out for me. So I just, I, <laughs> hey, dudes, one, how I you doing, man? You a giant thank you and a big shout out to not only the staff here uh, at the office, but many of our customers on Prompted came in, wished me a happy birthday, and right down to e- Joey Two Tone. Even even one of our uh, line reps was there with the. That's uh, right. Oh, I forgot. I forgot my hat. I, yeah. I was gonna wear my hat for the show. Yeah. Oh yeah, we did. Oh my god, we had fans. It was it was quite the party. But I mostly I really have to thank Christina, whom you've all met on this show. Uh, she let me be the princess today for a few hours, and and, and he makes a good princess. I was excellent. <laughs> I had a wand and everything. It was a great time. Yes, yes. Um, but I will pass the tear back. Uh, but I'm gonna let Rob hold on to it. Will Will and uh, Brittany both say happy birthday? Nice. Good. How's the audio, Will? Yeah, uh, can you guys hear us this week? Obviously you can if you understand Nick's birthday. So. Or if they saw the birthday. So yeah, uh, last week we did a great little, like I said, little show. We had a whole rundown on some bubblies. I got so depressed that it didn't come through that I'm not doing bubbly ever again. Um, yeah, we even all right, maybe just not tonight. Yeah. We're like, New Year's yeah. show, we all three drink bubbly. Yeah, Rob, Rob was not a fan of my idea of all of us grabbing a bottle of bubbly tonight. Um, Apparently, bubbly is not like the stock market. You don't chase one lost bottle of bubbly with three others. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe, maybe maybe next year. Although I gotta say, Josh did because I noticed a prosecco in his shopping bag. We do we do have some other bubbly occasions coming up. We have you know uh, Valentine's Day is yeah. is also a big bubbly so day. just to let the, fill it in. Cremant, champagne, uh, champagne noir. Uh, California Sparkling, California Brew. Uh, I've got... Uh, Prosecco, Cava. Prosecco, Cava. Several grades of Cava. I have some rosé that would light you up and make you realize you didn't even know Cava. I've also got the Cava that it could just fill the glass. Brenda Hogan and Callan uh, are... Nice. Uh, one rep. Callan's watching. They both say happy birthday to me. Thank you, Callan. <laughs> I know you Brenda really remember the bubbly... I will not mention the rep who didn't, but we all love him very much. <laughs> um, all right, so why don't we get on with what we're drinking? Uh, so I, I'm starting off with a noble apple pie hard cider. Just it's good stuff. Y'all. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> Just uh, something light and easy to, to drink tonight. On the note of light and easy, I get the lighthearted uh, bells. Bells? Uh, we have this in as part of that party pack feature. Yeah. Yeah, we got that. This thing crawled out and shot way slower than I thought, which tells me something really cool. Everybody got these, and they realized just how cool these gems were. I'm very happy for, like, honestly, it's a near beer. It's like 3.2, percent 3.7% alcohol. Just yeah. enough to remind me it's beer, but it's my birthday. I haven't missed the mad. We're going to have some more. It's fine. 
Okay. All right. It's also good cleanse. Yeah. All right. I'm okay. doing. Doing. I'm doing my cleanse. <laughs> <laughs> Not really sure that's how that works, but okie dokie. Oh yeah. yeah. Um. What you got, Josh? Original sin, Black Widow cider. Going back to this one. It's a solid palate cleanser. Easy drinking. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. that's been a big hit. Did you reorder? I thought we got. Uh, it yeah, that is the reorder. Um, we'll we'll be getting another order here in another probably next week. So if you like it, come get it. I mean, we still got plenty on the shelf. So man, it's here. It'll be here. Um, it. so I I've got a red wine this week. Okay. So I'm gonna pass it off to you guys on that the beer. It looks like dark beer. I recognize that bottle cap. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not to say everything they do is dark, but they I are the dark beer people. I have a dark one. So you that is their first? thing, right? We're yeah. the dark beer people. Oh, yeah, it's literally a bottle. Uh, guys, Modern Times is back in the shop. Just came in today. Uh, you know, I don't know. I feel like I could have nailed it. I don't care. I don't want to bother with it. Uh, my, modern Times has a very modern label. Uh, from the, you're going to have to get close to the camera on that because that gotcha. light... The, Thundera? Thundera. Yeah, Thundera, dude. I wanted them to tell me what part of Greek or Norse mythology Thundera was, but they told me it's Thundercats. Oh! (laughs) (laughs) Just had to do it for all the lovers out there. And with our powers combined? (laughs) No, no, that's that's another one. Oh, sorry. No. Huh. All those '80s cartoons kind of all. Mm, no, they were all, all excellent. Powers combined. Is that like Captain Planet? No, that. Yeah, that is Captain okay. Planet. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say that was Voltron, but no, that, that's Captain Planet. Voltron's like the sellout. That Voltron's like the GoBots of the uh, Transformers. Thundercats. Thundercats. That was so weird. They have these shields that project these holograms that are collected through the natural forces. And when projected in the right angle with their team, produces the effect. I th- oh, I think you yeah, 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 I think you up like a bunch of eighties. Yeah, so I think I got it. I looked at the can. I know how this episode goes. <laughs> that was that was not right. <laughs> That's like what well, also. Got- you brought their shields. It tells you what element no, they are. No. You got He Man TMNT came out around that time too, right? Mm-hmm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and. I feel like if you want to figure out... Hey, I'm thirsty. What those cartoons <laughs> were trying to do, all you have to do is watch Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Oh, Lord. And at first, I didn't like this cartoon. But at second glance, when I tried to explain the 106 different 80s cartoons I had watched after school without control of the remote, which these guys had, and I bless them for it. I realized yeah. that the 90s recap live action, like totally messed up samurai version, was actually pretty cool. Mighty Morphin's Power Rangers is. Before I take it back, I want to get a good look on the camera here. It's a really cool label on this can, by the way. Uh, I gotta say, their, their label work in modern times is really awesome. Modern times? Well, except we for the all white can that just has their. Excuse me, their name it on it. It was good and bad, it was totally imitated. The, I felt like Appalachian Mountain Brew changed their label on their lager to almost reflect what Trophy Wife had done. But anyways, I think. Man, that, that is orange color. So, what do you guys get? Is, yeah. this, is this haze? What are we looking at? Yeah, it's definitely hazy. It's almost colloidal. It's labeled as hazy. Alcohol, 6.7%. Classified like India Pale Ale. Just gotta tell you that. Uh, this beer is vegan. Uh, brewed in San Diego or Portland. Oh, that's and Portland Oil. <laughs> I've never heard of a beer brewed in two places. What do they do? Ship it up midway? Hey, we'll do the war. You guys age this stuff out. No, just that the joke. Every time you see the Portland address, it's like Portland or what? Or where? <laughs> and I have a lot of friends who grew up in Oregon would like to know, like, <laughs> hey, Portland. I moved to Portland or what? Like, or or else? Or, <laughs> but we'll pump the gas for you. So, smells like orange juice. Smells like orange juice. Looks like orange juice. 
Uh, first sip, first smell, nothing displeasing. Wanted to drink it, drank it, got oranges. Like Valencia oranges. Tastes like orange juice. New Year's Day, just oranges. Did you open a can of beer? Did you open a, 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 a bottle of orange juice? And... It tastes like the section when you're eating an orange and you get a little too much pit. On your orange. Like no, the, kind of, the orange it does just start to go like bad. The inside yeah. of like, <laughs> it looks like the inside of the orange and the outside of the grapefruit. So just going to like, in the modern art of modern times, maybe they already put that on the label for them. I mean, it's citrusy. It's got plenty of, plenty of citrus. This is rather enjoyable though. The malt tone is there too, giving that a little bit of sweetness up front. Uh, but it does, it's well balanced out with that bitterness on the back end. Yeah, yeah. The, the the bitterness is definitely there too. What uh? I mean, we like these guys. What else do we have to say about this? It's beer. Yeah, it's uh. It's highly drinkable. It's like it's good. I think I think being in the six percent range is definitely uh makes it uh crushable. It's got the haze. It's just not overdone with all the texture of like a New England. It's just very. Light feel on it, but it's it's there. It's got this. Where's Modern Times from? You said Oregon, San Diego, or and Oregon, and or or Oregon. <laughs> um, I I think it's pretty solid IPA offering right here. I mean, it, the only I guess the only complaint I would have is that it's not as bitter as I would want. It's got some bitter. The bitter's tucked in some funny places, and uh, yeah, it's got mouthfeel. Yeah, that's one thing I'm getting is there's. There's a tannic mouthfeel that I don't really get just overall in the flavor. Maybe in the when I started describing like that pithy grapefruit kind of thing, that uh, maybe somewhere in there is where the tannic of the mouthfeel is. Just very very hoppy, fresh hop. Yeah, I, I can drink this. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely like some fresh hoppy. Going I really on. like that people are finding this really pleasant side of hops. Yeah, like grass clippings a little bit. Yeah, for people who like cutting grass, not the people who are like, oh, you're cutting the grass, I'm going to the side. That's me. Now, what's with the people who want to talk to the lawnmower man? Maybe they just like the smell of dog poop. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I, I don't, don't know your frame of reference. I don't even know. Or maybe I did. Yeah. Mow well, it up lawns and you'll have my frame of reference. So, <laughs> all I got to say is I'm glad that Josh is... Allergic to grass and not to cut trees. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. I am allergic to every tree we probably cut down the other day. Yeah, those were not like wholesome oaks you guys were doing. No, I'm allergic to oak too, but it's just like, it's mostly the pollen. It's like I can touch a tree. Well, I, I want to quote, I want to quote Josh, because there was a phrase, I've studied, I actually have several uh, you know, college credits in botany and not once. In, in skeletal fractology, in uh, twig ID, in morphology, or taxonomy. You're Did, just making words up now. No, right? those are four sections of botany that like we okay study. Mm -hmm. uh, did I ever encounter ancient thorns? Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. I, at, at least I was nice enough to say, "Hey, Josh, big thorns." I was like, he tells me he he was. Bloodied with ancient thorns, and I was like, "Easy, man, it's Christmas." <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to hear this stuff right now. <laughs> there, there's some that there, there, there's some big ones. Imagine all the little spiked like vines you just find around, and imagine if they existed for like thirty years in the same place. So and that's what it was. All I can guess is Rob's <laughs> just trying to get a little more sunset in his life. Yeah, yeah, we need to get that cleared out so we get more sun on the side of the building. To fill everybody in, we're clearing out some land behind the office, right? Have we already said that? Yeah, I guess. No, we haven't. Well, we've been bracing people for changes. It's good to let them know what's going on. How's yeah. going by? What's what do you do? Do you guys sell? No, we're just clearing some trees. So if you hear cackling coming from behind the building, it's probably Rob and myself out yeah. there just being crazy. Or it might be Nick laughing at Rob. And Josh. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> Yeah, Nick had to take a special trip out the other day just to get get a, a, a full view of, of the hilarity. It wasn't exactly how I would run my operation, but I, I 
really, I couldn't disagree with any single part of it. Hey, we made progress. All right, so back to the beer. Yeah, um, beer, uh, this one's doing its job. We, we drank it, we talked, we liked it. I'm ready to try others. My problem at this moment is... You haven't drank your first one. No, and I don't want to get rid of this. And you're, I need you're glass. You're going slow, man. Well, it's your birthday. So, so you pound it. it. I'm glad we said the exact same thing, too. Why don't you start pouring beer and talking about it? Do you need an opener? I always come for beer. There was a rumor today that we needed more keychain bottle openers. I know where they all went. No, uh, most of these are not. Well, that, what do you guys think? Rate that one. And that's why we need the active mic. Uh, yeah, so... Our bad news, yeah, we tried the new hardware we told you about last week that you didn't hear about because we weren't talking, so it's not that bad. <laughs> so hopefully we can take it next week. So yeah, we're going to um, work on getting this hardware working next week. Nick picked up some uh, pieces of equipment that... Uh, Really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, we hope to integrate them. Um, Nick, Nick's really looking forward to getting his. Uh, um, it's not an easy. Fra- Fraser Crane drinker, on. But second, you start pounding that beer. It's... The trick is to There's open. Feedback. The trick is to hold your throat just the right way, and it will just write down. Uh-uh. My fortieth uh-uh. birthday. Uh-uh. And not this going guy's there. telling me how to hold my throat. Not going there. <laughs> Not falling for it. <laughs> no. See, no. you know, in my younger days, I follow that rabbit down. What do you mean by it? I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean if, if Christina were here, maybe. But no, no. Oh, yeah. Well, you didn't fall for the trap, so. This definitely got some haze. So next up, we got out of Farmville, North Carolina. Going back to North Carolina Brewery. The Duck Rabbit Porter. We've been doing a lot of darker beers on the show, and I figured it's about time. Give Duck Rabbit a little love. About, um, about time to like showcase ooh. a different kind of port. I think the unicorn likes the dark beer. And, and the main reason I'm saying that is I had one of these probably four or five days ago, and it reminded me of how much different this porter is than a lot of the porters you see out there. And... Uh, they make a Baltic porter. Yes. You should remember well, that. Yeah, well, they make a Baltic. This is a straight up. And they really try to only make dark beers. And they do a damn good job. Even the Scotch Ale is a dark beer. That's darker than Bud Light. <laughs> By the way, Rob, they want the barley money back. <laughs> Who does? The, the they. There, there's not many in the they, but the duck red at barley wine. If you guys remember that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff. So I gotta say, like one thing about this one is I don't get quite as much roast on the nose as I do with a lot of like the porters that have been coming out. Yeah, I do. There's a little bit. I do prefer the Baltic porter that they make versus over this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, not saying I don't like this one, but it's far, between the two. Well, the Baltic's gonna be way maltier too. So, to say Baltic verse, and I know we've talked about this in other episodes, but like, does that make this an English porter? Or. This is. I've, I've been trying to say that this is definitely an Americanized porter. Okay. Because it is way hoppier. This is America. 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 But uh, this is hoppier than the porters we've had. Despite what you did in that bathroom, son, you use America. American Porter. Josh, you Absol- say? Absolutely. Now you know how they named the episode. <laughs> Jesus. You were saying, Josh? Right, yeah. yeah. Um, but what I find about this is it's a good degree hoppier than a lot of the porters we've had. And it's, I would not, not say it's terribly hoppy, but it's definitely more bitter in a different way than just like the toast and the roast. Because that's a lot of the bitterness we've been getting with a lot of the other porters. Yeah. And I honestly found it kind of interesting. And pleasant the other day to have that different approach to it. And I forgot how much I actually like this beer because I used to drink the crap out of this. Yeah. Um, so the milk style is probably their like red winner and the one I've drank the most of. But mm. 
this has a little bit of like an herbaceous quality. It might be in the hopping that you're talking about. That the bitterness comes through like a minty um, herb garden like uh, feel, like, like peppery it, basil. It's kind of uh, thinner uh, viscosity wise than yeah. the one I'm used to from a porter. But I also yeah. dig that in the way that I'm like, I really like this with a burger or some yeah something you know. Well, what what really stuck out to me? My Twitter's out. going off. Uh, it, um, it does <laughs> taste closer to like Guinness and like a lot of the darker ales. You know. Um, By the way, if you want to follow Nick on Twitter, it is at BeastBoy14. <laughs> and uh, I thought it was at Pork Shoulders68. Oh, did he change it already? No. <laughs> Just tweet to both of those, and Nick will get it eventually. Happy was, Princess 28. It was half back, 44 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nicholas. So, yeah. Um, like I said, it, it's it's thinner. I get all the, the taste notes you're saying. You know, right. I'm used to the porters just being a heavier beer, and this is... This is one that could could have more than you know, two or three, just because oh, yeah. it's not that heavy on you. Yeah, I don't even know what the ABV on that is. Um, hey, I, I'd wager a guess probably around like five eight. Uh, you don't say. Oof. They don't say either. These guys are messing with me. You're getting you. I can't believe they did this. Like they know what we're doing right now. I just got. Texted happy birthday on the employee text board. I'm just going to say that. And now I'm going to send the text. You know, that employee can now tune in and you know hear what, what I, all the rest of you I just heard me I say. I did not text you happy birthday <laughs> because I wanted to tell you happy birthday in person. They, That's awesome. Thank you, Josh. That's really cool, man. You know, I, yeah, we, man, we've had a couple they, of birthdays. They we do not. Brew. We haven't brewed yet this year. We got we'll brew. We've been talking it up. They do Everybody not list their ABV on here. That's our trip this week. Go to Farmville, North Carolina and ask Duck Rabbit what the ABV on the porter is. Well, I mean, if you push me hard enough, I'll probably <laughs> fall down the hill. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, they, they do not list, list the ABV on there. It's a little high ground joke. For uh, honestly, I have no reason to visit Farmville, and I probably will. Well, if you have a warehouse there and you run a business in the Outer Banks, after the hurricane comes through, you can go to Farmville and get your refrigerated goods from where there was power and bring it back out to the banks on a highway. What are you going on about? Okay. Um, That's I why Farmville just... exists. <laughs> I thought it was a few people that had farms. Yeah, it's just farms. Why is there a bill? Because there's more than one person with a farm. It's a collection of farms. <laughs> we drink some wines with the word veal on it, right? What do they need? Well, that's that's exactly what they need when they say that. That sounds like a segue to drinking wine. Oh, which, please. That's a very pleasurable part. My, oh, my, yeah. my favorite so, part of the show. Rob's not a big smoky pour. I didn't want to make it like a feature. I didn't think it was smoky. Um, I mean, it's got that smoke and rice on the back end on the finish, but it's not like... Well, the only it. really smoky porter that I didn't like was that uh, Bell's one. That's that was let, literally said smoke porter on the bottom. I didn't bottom. know I wanted the hamburger. I, I drank this beer, I'm like, I want, I want a cheeseburger. Thank you. I had a Jersey Mike sub today. Not to rep Jersey Mike's, but I'm never just. I'm curious. What's your number? Oh, I eat the veggie sub every time. Oh, okay. Because instead of meat, it's just a this chunk of cheese. Like, it's supposed to be healthier for you, but it's just like this half inch thick set. That provolone, of that, that creamy provolone they have that yeah. melts those fillies. Every time I eat it, it's like, this is not healthy. I'm always like, I'm going to go healthy. <laughs> I'm like, can I get the uh, 13 and I'm going to need a giant big kahuna? Yeah, I'm a thir- like for, I'm, for you, I'm a thirteen sir. too. Yeah, the thirteen is all the way. Mike's way, uh, and hot pepper, and definitely every now and then you gotta do the relish. 
I, Mike's I, way, I, no onion. I'm good. I, I do I do the veggie Mike's way with pepper relish and spicy mustard. You don't think the onion does a little something special for that sweet cap cola? I'm, I'm not a I'm not a Why raw onion? onion fan. He's not a runion fan. All right, so tonight's um, wine is the X the Chiloca. Uh, Garnacha. Mm. How much Spanish do you do you guys know? How much? How much about Spain do you want to know? Mm. I know enough that if I went to Spain, I could probably get drunk. My guess is this might be like <laughs> I don't know if they're drinking it under this label, but I feel like you've run into some hit people. They're drinking this. I remember the tasting of the red. I, I, I remember. I'm the, excited already. Rob I remember. I remember. I know. Jaloka. Yes, please. That's good. Sorry. Yeah. Woo! Almost got you. I got the combat boots. That's, on that's that combat cheers there. You do have some combat boots, man. I don't know what size shoes Josh actually wears, but, uh. Josh goes to clown school in combat boots. Yeah. These might be the appropriate footwear. No, they're 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 appropriate. God, you got some long feet. Not really. So fat. this is the Garnacha. Yeah, Garnacha. Chiloca. How do you Ch- say that? Ch- Chiloca. The, the, the X is a C H, right? Yeah. You think it's a hard? I think it's a hard X. How else would you say that? Well, I was just thinking back to some of the beers we had the uh, uh, from Stone, the Choco Vesa, which was chocolate. That's Mexican. I remember the rest. It's a different saying, kind of Spanish. Okay. This is from Spain, right? Okay. I remember say, saying back to the rat, chillax. And they were like, exactly. So I said, chiloca. <laughs> chillax. <laughs> anyway, so on the nose of this guy, we got. Uh, some dark uh, raspberry, blackberry. Oh, yeah, yeah, but it's all like it's all like a beauty. It's so like it's chocolate, chocolate swirl. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's definitely fruit. It's not. It's not like chocolate with some fruit in it. It's like there's like. Yeah, how do you, a, a marriage, you look at marriage of, in a pond yeah. with open lattice? That's like what I'm smelling. So. I will say I was eating a pomegranate earlier today because I do. That. When are you yeah, not you, eating a pomegranate? Yeah, bring this up every week. Oh, well, they're good. Okay. But we, we bought one that apparently had like a little crack on it and it started leaking out in the bowl. So a section of the pomegranate fermented. Oh, I yeah yeah yeah. That's kind uh, of one of those kinda, things. It kind of like every time I'd eat one of the fermented pomegranate seeds, which oh, I got lucky. I got the scratch glass. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of like wine in general. And I'm not saying I get pomegranate with this, but it's like, it's got that kind of... I, you know, I worked in produce. And Dang this used to be produce. like, this was like a popular joke amongst oh, us in produce. Sorry. Um, and I'm just going to throw this out there. Anybody who's worked just hands-on in food may appreciate this. Is that you find that orange, you find that pomegranate, you find that piece of fruit, that peach, you're like cleaning the bins. Yeah, we all find the gross stuff, just the unedible. But you find this one, you're like, you know, you give it a bite, and it just has that fermented taste. You guys, it tastes like wine. Like, it tastes like brandy. It, the peach tastes like peach brandy. Well, I'm just telling you, the more I get into this, it's it's blackberry and chocolate all day long. And I haven't even taken a sip of it yet. I guess that's probably why Josh and I are going on about it. Is I just want to get across the May- pure essence of the fruit. Maybe some Coming blueberry. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, but it's got it's mostly bramble fruit, like blackberries. Yeah, but it's that it is that fermented state. There's no trick. I don't think I'm getting fruit juice. I know this is one. It's like too ripe fruit. But now that I know this is wine, and you gave me this glass, and I'm drinking it. Fuck, this is juicy. Is my feeling like this is this is juice box material, but it didn't come from a box. This came from a really nicely labeled bottle, wine from Spain. So, on the palate, 
I'm getting overripe fruit again, mm-hmm. just like on the nose. But then those tannins are hitting me. And the I'm, tannins are. And, and 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 it's like there's a balance there that, that keep the the overripe fruit is just sweet enough to to, the tannins. to keep me from having to teeth suck the, the front of my teeth. Because but the, but the tannins are there going. Ooh, I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna hit you. But and then they hang out for a bit and they dip out. Yeah. And so it's not like. The, the tannins are really well balanced in this. I guess that's what Josh and I are trying to get to is that taking a sip of this wine is like, it's like eating that decaying fruit that hasn't rotted. It's just in its like decay format. You get to experience these old sugars, these oxidized, these matured flavors of the fruit itself. And that's what I get with this wine. It's just so available. Feels luxurious. Did, a, a did a portion of me eat the pomegranate just to see if I would get drunk from eating drunk. a rotten pomegranate? Oh, um, one pomegranate kernel. <laughs> yeah, um, no, that'd that'd be be unfortunately, awesome. that doesn't work. So you just end up eating like a starving to ferment pomegranate. But this is a a thick wine. It is. I remember this from the tasting. I I can only describe that texture as wrapping. Like, it feels very blanketing. Yeah. And it's not like it doesn't carry that caramelized texture. It doesn't feel very woody. It just well, has this... Back to, back to how the viscosity of the porter was thin to me. Mm-hmm. This, this is, is the opposite. This The viscosity, the feel, the mouth feel. Mm-hmm. And I get what you're saying, wrapping. Because it feels like a nice blanket. Yeah. And around, I think that's around. part of that juiciness that I originally described. Is yes, there's available fruit, but it has this full palate feel. Um, no, I don't think it has the maturity of your $50 top of the no. knob California. Or is it the uh, 900 year tradition of some Normandy wine? No, it's some totally available Spanish flavors. And it's freaking awesome. But I'll, I'll tell you right now, like, the way the texture and the flavor on this one, from my everyday drinking red, this is what yeah. this is. This is legitimately the epitome of what I would want to just drink. I would also say that this would be the wine that you would get, and this is not a sexist thing. But this is the wine you would get the ladies who only drink white or only drink sweet white wines. Mm-hmm. To transition a little bit towards reds. Oh, Spanish red, and especially chill like Spanish reds like this. These this is the cherry in the chocolate cherry. This is the thing that gets people to go, Oh, I could I could do this. I, you know, for I mean, me I, it wasn't a Spanish red. I, if somebody gave me a Chiante that opened my world of red wine, it just whew. So I'm willing to bet that um but Spanish Our red can do that same thing. Fell employee Anna, this would be the red wine that we we convert her to. Oh, yeah. it, would, it, it very likely would remind her of other tastes that she's had, and be like, oh, this is what if we were yep. kidding. Her. No, yeah. my, my favorite reds are the tan ones, but like for an everyday drinking red, something I could just literally just pour a glass of at any point in time. I don't need food. For this. Yeah, and and that's odd for me because I normally uh, rotate or gravitate towards uh, Spanish reds. Because they generally are higher tannic uh, mm-hmm. wines, um, this is this one is not. I mean, it's the tannins are there. Don't get me wrong, but the fruit mm-hmm. is more predominant than the tannins. It's a cool take, on yeah. Spanish. Uh, I think that's why we all really liked this when we tasted it. Yeah, yeah. It was it was just a little bit different. Um, and I just had to text mom. She wished me a happy birthday. Oh. And I'm not gonna lie, the label is actually pretty cool. Oh yeah, it's it's very I dig it. Um it's minimalist. Do you guys nice. know what that X is? Um ten? That's Xavier. I mean that is that is the Jesuit X. So, it, that, so that tells me that in some way they're making a statement towards her. Uh, towards old heretics? Heret- well, <laughs> yes, the Jesuits made a statement towards heretics, correct. I'll just stop there. 
Uh, it's a Jesuit X is what it looks like to me. Xavier, Francis Xavier, the... Well, how do you have a Jesuit X versus, like, an X? Yeah. The tail? The serif? Yeah, the Roman numerals didn't have serifs. What serif? Well, the, the Times Roman numeral... On well, that's computer. the way they're written in neoclassical style, which came from... <coughs> Yeah, you re- you're asking the leading questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? what makes you think that? Yes. Anyways, throw it out there. It's what in debate. serif? A serif is the little it's ditty the on the side of the X. Of the, the little what on the side of the X? Like the top and bottom, the way it would fit. So Latin text fit within these line things, and they were large. They were all capital letters. And so they would have these... Basically, if you separated any piece of Latin text from its line, it would have these serifs. But serif is not a Latin or Roman way of writing. It's actually a <clears throat> different place where that emanated. <laughs> oh, I thought serifs were little winged fairies. Well, it's the little winged fairies nice on the end of the Nice wordplay right there. Yeah. Um, way to dive into the Kabbalah right there, too, you know. Um, but now... The, Serif and sans serif are mainly fonts on computers. You know, Arial has none of the yeah. little ditties. Serif, little ditties. There we go. Josh just solved it for you. So the thing is, Arial, like sans serif font, is easier to read on paper. Serif font like that is easier to read on a computer screen. So my big question on all that is, um, or it could be the other way around. That's why I think it was a Jesuit. Answer. My my big question on all that is. Um, what food do you think this would go, well, I would go with? Because I mean, it, that's it, that's the tough thing right now for I me. I mean, if, if my idea on this holds true, I want to drink this at the running of the Bulls in Pamplona. I want to get some steak. And so you, you wanna like, I want to bite a cow's ass as, as it runs past you. I okay, gotcha. bite a cow's ass and get a tomato in the face at the same time while drinking this wine. Um, uh-huh. I'd say, like, I'd say paella would be, be good. Yeah. Um, something like you that. You always go to paella. Well, when we're yeah, talking Spanish ones. Them. He's right. He's got it. Come well, on. Well, but this would have to be like heavily paprika. You know, like lots of paprika and all that. And I think it would go really well with this. And light on the seafood. More chorizo. I'm thinking goat. Goat would be great with this. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't know what goat tastes like. And yeah. they're missing out. And, and I'm thinking um, on a... Uh, Oh, what are the X's? Spitfire. No, they're spits, but Did they're... Did you say X? It, 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 yeah. <laughs> just, it, it, you, know. you know what I'm talking about? The the, the poles that they, they'll they tie each leg to. And oh, they, yeah. They yeah. lean them into the over top of the fire, and then they can rotate them from there. I don't know what it's called, but I know exactly what you're talking about. That oh, because be awesome. you can do it, and then you can... And then it like folds it and unfolds. You just you just rotate it and so front to back. So you always trap in. Oh man! Just moves the juices around and cooks. Oh, it's like a peg rotisserie. It's some different. Yeah, I, I there's a name. It's got more of a place name really. But, but that sounds amazing. It does any rotisserie um, with mountain the, meat? I think would just taste great. With a lot of. Um, But Josh is right. The, a lot the, of herbs in that, that. The wild boar or tasso ham that you put in your uh, in your pie next to your shellfish really, is going to fit with this. I really think your mountain goat. The paprika. Taste. I think the paprika alone as a spice or herb or whatever would go really well with this. Like, and not just like the little plastic jar of paprika, but like actual paprika. And it's like smoke and ground up. You know, like, I think that would be really cool with this. I just told mom we're drinking Spanish Grenache. What's a pair? Uh, Grenache, um, in its, like, prior mm-hmm. state to being a Spanish, we know Spanish Grenache is basically Spanish version of Grenache. Yeah. These are not different grapes. They're just geographically localized, right? Uh, and so we, we know Grenache in French wines as a waterfowling 
it's often part of the one of our favorite blends, right? On GSM. Co Coat your own, right? Yeah, coat your own. My mom's favorite wine. So I would get her opinion right now. What do you think about Grenache and Spanish? Just like as a vintage and I'm loving it. And people have told me as long as I've loved wine, they've said, Man, the way you taste wines and the flavor you're gonna like is is Grenache. Like you're gonna like it. And they're right, man. I don't remember telling them that. Burnt butter. <clears throat> Something with like a burnt butter sauce, maybe like fancy with scallops with like a brown or black butter just over the top. I think this would overpower the scallops. It could, but that's why well, the butter itself would overpower the scallops. Yeah, I, I really think that this is going to be a gamey meat type. I think if you wanted scallops to hit the plate with some turf, if you braised them with some of this wine, you could win them into that diet. Yeah, I do feel that. Like the wine. Yeah. And I think I do get his feel on getting seafood to get this flavor. I do it's, get that. It's more about the texture of the scallops, like some okay. kind of meat the texture of scallops that could have the flavor to hold up to this langoustines, maybe. Yeah. Octopus. And that's a popular thing actually. Octopus would I be think good. there's a Mallorca langoustine or whatever that they do. Bray's Bra Octo. That's it right there. Octo's the a true best dish. They do that from Barcelona, Valencia, on over to around the other side. What's that? Bilbo, Bilbo or whatever? The, the bow? Yeah. I always forget to pour it on the bay of this guy. Sargosa's yeah. your mountain town. Pamplona's your high So mountain. what you're saying is that we should get some goat and octopus and eat those soon? Uh, goat. Yeah. I feel like goat. We've been talking goat up. We should probably take the podcast on the road and go find some goat and just like try it. Uh, I know a few people that sell. Are, are we going to go and like find a goat and talk to it? Or are we going to. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> hey, if we get a goat, as long as someone kills it, I can butcher it. I just don't like the killing part. The unicorn said the goat has no interest in our conversation. <laughs> the goat has no interest. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can believe that. Um, I'll just pick up some coke from Saigon next time I'm up there. <laughs> What's that, Uni? Oh, the goat would prefer us not talking to it. You're, uh, you're, oh, you're talking to the unicorn now. Well, the unicorn yeah. was making itself known to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so ratings. Uh, yeah, I was I was just. I don't know if I'm ready Still to hung up on, on what I was trying to come up with that's the name of that I kind of want to compliment uh, Shiloka on just being a conversation starter. Like, yeah, we, I mean, we kind of got lost on what to pair this with. This might be the appetizer, and who cares what you're serving? Well, just, I was making dinner, but I guess yeah. I'm not now. <laughs> like, serve something. Now we know why tapas exists. What's that? Uh, I forgot to eat dinner, and it's 11. I should probably put something in my stomach before I go to bed. You can put tomatoes on there? Yeah! Uh. <laughs> top, top is a great man. <laughs> it's tomato wrapped olives. Top, top is like the entire, <laughs> the entire concept of tapas and like the small bites, of, like different it's restaurants. really cool. Like everything about that is my favorite thing in food. Like it's well, my favorite, out of all the different cultures of food, like the tapas culture is probably my favorite. In Meg's company, tapas is a really cool thing. It's tough to go round for round with drinks with people, isn't it? Yeah. Some people drink more, some people drink less. Some people drink fast, some people drink slow. I'll tell you what, though. If you like the way that food item sounds and you just want a bite, order it, take a bite, and find out who else at the table wants to take a bite of that item. Yeah. And that's who you're talking about. The way I always see it, it's like one of those things, like you're with a group of people you show up at the bar. <laughs> Couple people want to get drinks. Like I don't want to drink here. It's like cool. Well, you order the food. We'll grab drinks. You order some food, and somebody else is like, "Well, I want some of that too." So it doesn't have the name of it, but that's the spit I'm talking about for the roast for the roasting of the goat. Oh, that's how they used to cook them at Popeyes. Uh, they cook fresh lamb. Yeah, uh, it, Greek style. But it's I like might a, just be called Spark. No, it's there, there's a name. There's for a it. name for it, but that that specific type of it's not often you can have food cooked that way, but like it, it is a really superior cooking method. It's just not practical. It's a little different than rotisserie, isn't it? 
And you gotta have the yeah, right fire. Because and you gotta be burning the right wood. Yeah, you're you're leaving it over the coals for yeah, and then you're rotating it every hour. This is like the stuff hey, when we switch night watch, you rotate the dough. Yeah. So I don't know, I anyway, I, anyway do, that, I, I do like Rob's backcountry kitchen episode there. That was a nice segue. Sorry, sorry, I was I was just fixated on trying to find out that that name of that. It that happens, kitchen. man. But now I really want to eat a goat. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to Rob opening his smokery and having smoked goat as one of the things. You never know what might happen. You call it smoke. I don't like that. Never mind. <laughs> so. <laughs> I heard Josh say something about let's get to some ratings. I like that idea. Oh yeah, cool. And so I'm sure all anybody who may still be watching uh, may be ready for ratings too. We lose like, all of our viewers. Yeah. Uh, we still have one. Ha- oh no, that's me. I- <laughs> <laughs> Between my mom and the people I work with, I've asked everybody I know. So why don't we start with the rating on the Thundera? <laughs> Thundera, all right. Dude. Thundera was really cool. Dug the label. Uh, it won the label battle. There was a different modern times. I thought about tasting, and the guy said, "Go with your eyes." You know, I'm usually a trust your gut guy. In which case, I would have chosen neither high, hazy IPA. Uh, in this case, I was glad I did. Choose I would have chosen that peanut butter oak burger. Peanut butter milk stout. Yeah. In this episode, Rob dreams about peanut butter milk stout. <laughs> I think I just named it. And and Nick and Nick not having any allergic reaction. Not having any part of it. It's my birthday. I'm trying not to throw up. It's our <laughs> subtitled episode title. That's a solid. <laughs> That's a solid. It's, deal, sir. That is parentheses solid. forty. Okay, so... <laughs> uh, basically... Modern Times. Modern Thundera. Times. I'm going to say... Uh, I barely remember you won five. I like Modern Times beer. Very drinkable. Don't feel insulted. I just... There was nothing absolutely special, and that's not a bad thing. So, I'm going to have to bat Nick up on that. I think... So... My takeaway off of Thundera was orange juice. It looked like orange juice. It smelled like orange juice. It tastes like orange juice. Maybe orange juice that had been opened a little too long was just starting to sour. Um, Maybe somebody was drinking mimosas in the brewery. But uh, other than that, it really didn't... It wasn't like a huge wow factor to me. I thought it was solid. I thought it's crushable. Um, I think that... Could I drink three or four of these and, and you know, be okay oh, with that? Wow. Dude, you're crazy. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> uh, I do think I could. and uh, um, But I'm going to go 1-5 on it also. Yeah. Oh, I'm good. I'm good on the candies. It's uniform. Um, Poop kisses, man. So what I'm going to uh, do is actually echo all you guys. With this one, um, thank you. It's a solid IPA. It's well made. Um, it did. My problem with it is that it's like good, but it's like basic good. Like it, it hits all like the regular good check marks, but like there's nothing else. It's like it's citrusy. It's orangey. Uh, it's it's really good. Um, so I'm gonna give it a 1.5. It just it doesn't stand out to me. Yes. So I'd have to say that's probably its biggest downfall. Like in a world of God knows how many IPAs that probably taste the same way. I mean, would it stand out? I don't think so. Um, so 1.5, excellent. Like I'll drink it. Like if I saw it on the shelf and like it's what I wanted, I'd buy it. But nope. Like 1.5. Okay. So that beer got a one five. So Josh, your duck rabbit porter. Duck rabbit porter. I'm gonna give these guys yeah one seven. I'm gonna go one six. Cool. Why are you going one seven? It's it's solid representation of the porter style. It's a little bit different. Um, I enjoyed the hoppiness of this, and like that the bitterness was not coming just from the smoke or roasted aspect. 
I prefer bitterness to come from things besides smoky roasty, because sometimes like, there are a few breweries that get it right, but some breweries that try to go for the bitter from the smoky roasty, hit it a little bit wrong and lose an ashy kind of feel. Um, none of that to this. Um, it's solid. It's easy drinking. Um, Twelve ounce bottle. I can't remember the price. I think it was two seventy five. Yeah, two seventy five. So I mean, it's it's a solid choice. If you like dark beer, you're not going to be disappointed. If you don't like dark beer, give it a try. If you don't like it, give it to somebody who likes dark beer. So my favorite part of tonight's tasting, thank you, Josh, well said, is that there was these were highly drinkable beers. Like we're not giving them off the chart ratings. And I'm gonna stand by my one six right next to his one seven. I Even think it's the other his explanation. Didn't he go one six? You went one seven. Hmm. You went one seven. And he went one six. Okay. Are you obfuscating? Yeah. Okay. By the way, I'm trying the chocolate because I want to know what the wine does it. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit that on my review. The chocolate and the wine. Does it go with the wine? I have a feeling that it's like the answer to back back to your duck rabbit. Um. So the way I feel about duck rabbit is this is the completely unoffensive dark beer. You, you broke out the dark beer and your friends don't like dark beer? Yeah, but this is the Duck Rabbit Porter. It's kind of like the Green Man Porter. Like, it's really available. You can just drink this. You're an ale fan? Dig in, try this. You might become a dark beer fan. Also, this is a beer you've already had a few and you've got to drink a beer with dinner. Huh. Order this beer. It's going to be okay. It's going to go with whatever you eat. From like mashed potatoes and gravy to hamburger to seafood, whatever. It's going to go with all of it. Um, and that's really one of the beauty points of a nice mild porter like this. So I stand behind one six. So I'm going to go hmm. one four. Not what I expected. I got you there. Um, I'm going to go one four. Um, the reason for it. Basically, in my mind, unfortunately, Duck Rabbit, you're competing with yourself. Uh, I think the Baltic Porter is so much better. Um, and, you know, like I said, it's it's an in-house competition. I would give the Baltic Porter 1718 all day long. I'd really dig it. Um, this, while a basic Porter, I think it's too basic uh, for... What I'm looking for from Porter, very thin, very, you know, the, the taste notes were rather muted. Um, I didn't get a lot of the, the toasty, malty, you know, from, from that I'm used to from any other Porter. So I think that um, I'm, I'm going to stick with one four just because you're competing with yourself. It might be a little bit better than, than that, but if, you did, if they didn't have the Baltic to sit yeah. side by side with it. Um, so it's still worth drinking. I mean, it's not, it's not like, you know, it's a crap beer and I gave it a point two. Right. Um, also, it's a two seven five. That's right. I don't know. If the you're Baltic not, you're not going to lose in. out. I think the Baltic might be a seasonal special that comes in. It is. And, and it's actually out now, which I think we're going to be getting in the next week or so. Yeah, they usually garner it just before the. So, um, we're going to, that is going to make us, uh, bring us to moving on to the, Chaloca Ganacha from Spain. Um, so I want to start off with Nick. I like that you gave me the chocolate. Yeah, I wanted to try it because I know what you were looking for. I know what I was looking for and was it? not getting it. No. It, you it, know, you it know really... my favorite part of the chocolate pair was my second set. Yeah, the chocolate was gone. Yeah, I had to get back. Yeah, the, the, the chocolate totally destroyed this wine. It didn't. So all the chocolate you need is in the wine. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's. Are you going to dry it now? You're like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> All right, yeah, I put a bit of honey. Oh, you got the bit of honey? That's going to go perfect. <laughs> so, so we got the ganache. Um, it's a single um, varietal wine. Um, Maybe not. This is a big... It's a nuttiness, doesn't it? This is a big ripe bramble fruit, as Josh put it earlier. Um, red wine. Big... Blackberry over sweetness on the nose came through on the palate. Uh, chocolate came through on the nose. Chocolate came through on the palate. 
the tannins came came in on the palate and they they really rounded out this wine um, nicely. I think is at uh, Fort's price point, it's a thirteen dollar bottle. Uh, I think it's really good. It's very entry level, but it's also wine that you can drink by itself. You can drink with some gamier meats. I think um, it's meal ready. But I don't think it really needs to rely on having a meal to back it up. I think you could drink it by itself. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to link, Rob. Where'd you put your thumbs on this? I haven't yet. But I'm going with 175. Just, I, I was, I was going to go 15 and then I was reminded of the price point of $13. I, I'm admiring Rob's stamp on that, and I do not want to detract from that. I don't think I can go as high, but I'm just going to say that's an outstanding rating. And Chaluka did a great job. I want to say part of what influences my rating, getting this thing jacked up for the 1-7 territory, is the price point. There are Spanish wines you can drink that are low quality, and you're not going to get them cheaper than basically on the shelf at $9.99. This thing's 13 bucks a few more shelves, and you get yourself up to meal-ready wine. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is everything. You jump, it just... It takes it takes ten dollars to make this jump in French wine, but what we can do with this one is jump right there and get you into top shelf flavors, and it's really there. No, it doesn't have this languishing oak flavors, but it is everything about the fruit of wine that you need to know, and especially if you're just getting into drinking wine, this is something that you need to check. And I, I do think that it's the good transition wine, like I said earlier. That's all I have to say. One seven, I'm down with it. Like I am in. Cool. So is on the show. I'm gonna echo Rob on this one. I'm gonna go one seven five. Yeah. I think it's a very drinkable wine. Um, with the caveat, just don't do it with something sweet. Yeah, that that chocolate yeah. did not yeah. work. The chocolate. Once like, the sugar was th- gone, I almost liked it. Better. I thought it was good when I still had chocolate in my mouth, and then I took another sip. Like, yeah. Oh, so like bad pairing. Yeah, um, it did. A bit of honey, um, even worse. <laughs> so the nuttiness didn't do anything. No, it was awful. And the honey that was yeah. that was terrible. So this is definitely drink. not a wine to drink with dessert. Keep it's that not mind. a dessert wine. It's, it's a um, meal, right? Yeah. yeah, you're you're gonna want to really if you're gonna have it with food, you're gonna like want to serve for like meaty gamey flavors um, which leads me to say that I think this is just a table red wine like just something to drink yeah like it, like without food or anything just like it's, it's a really great wine yeah. to get that it, you don't need it with food and it's totally unoffensive yeah I mean it's it's a great drinking red wine um, the price point you can't beat it's a great easy red so one seven five for me. And the bottle, the, the label's classic enough that you could take it into a, a restaurant, and pay their corkage fee, and no one's gonna look people, at you. Yeah, people are like, what? What you drinking over it there? Does, kinda... I actually really appreciate the label. Um, it whether you're going to a restaurant or a party, you can sneak sneak it in. Yeah, not not sneak it, not not. I know what you mean. You're not talking about sneaking in past I mean, a, a restaurant court I mean, country, but you're talking yeah. about. You can sneak this in as a, a, a higher, yeah, a higher class wine. I'm what it is because honestly, yeah. then your friends are gonna come right back down to the office. They're gonna be like, Rob, I need a case. Yeah, I don't, look I don't know when I'm throwing parties, but I am, and I need it there. Let's yep. honestly, you, if you're looking for a way to protect your wine shelf, bottles like this are like your first line defense from your face. <laughs> <wine. laughs> okay. <laughs> Never look at it that way, but this is a great one. Oh, have you tried this? <laughs> yeah, you all oh, I saw you were it. looking at that. Oh, you gotta try this. Why are you yeah. drinking your famous in the other room? There you quietly. go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> all right, guys, uh, that's gonna do it for episode seventy nine of What Are You Drinking Now here at the office. Absolutely. Um, Josh, you got a couple things to say for us. If you're watching us on YouTube, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe below. We do appreciate everything you have to say. We actually wish you would say more of it yep. at any point in time. True. Um, but yeah, like, comment, subscribe. We're always here for you. And we're on Facebook Live. This will also be posted uh, on Facebook so you can watch it there. Yeah. 
<laughs> and uh, starting next week, probably look for a uh, quick blurb from us on Friday. Uh, we are going to do a new format for probably maybe once a month. We might go into every week if it goes over well. But it's the virtual tasting. Yeah, uh, I like this idea. We're, we're going. We're, we're going, going to planet. announce. That's right. We're going to announce on Friday what we're going to be drinking. Um, that way, that gives you the opportunity to come in, grab a bottle of it, and then join us in the tasting. I would like to incentivize. Uh oh. The virtual taste. The equipment, the aforementioned equipment, will allow us to call in guests. Oh, I don't. So I'm, I'm scared. just gonna put that out. Okay, I'm, you, I'm scared. You could be our virtual taster. Who could be live on air with us if you like, comment, and subscribe? All right. All right. So, guys, uh, we will, like I said, we'll put the blurb out uh, sometime Friday, maybe Friday evening. That'll give you the weekend to get it. I'm calling. And, uh, and we'll see you next week. Have a good one. Of course, giving these guys a